Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today is our Quick Tip Thursday webinar. It's going to be a short yet thorough um, description of understanding regions in Topaz Adjust today. Regions are probably the number one question we've ever had here at Topaz. So it is something that consistently comes up. It is a, um, a difficult, or if you don't really know what it's doing, it can be difficult to know how it's really working with your image. And Topaz Adjust is one of our, um, our most po it, it is our most popular product, so we definitely want to make sure that you understand what's going on. And Adjust's ability to bring more local contrast and that dynamic um, exposure and dynamic range that we all love so much is made possible by the region slider, so it is very important. The slider determines how your adaptive exposure, which it works in conjunction with, um, is dispersed across the image. And the value of that slider is going to be determined or determines that um, disbursement. So let's take a look and see um, how it really works. Here we go. All right, so if we took this image into Topaz Adjust, this is the original shot. Let me show you a couple different ways that the regions and adaptive exposure could be applied to it. The top left here is the original shot, and it is at region one, as you can see here. And we're going to go into the actual program here in a moment, but this is just a visual so you can kind of see how it works. When your regions are at one, then your adaptive exposure is going to be applied to your whole image without actually breaking it down into other regions because you only have one region which is your full image. And so with that we have the after image over here on the right. What the adaptive exposure is going to do, it's going to look at the region that you've however many regions you've selected, in this case one, it's going to look at that region and it's going to try to maintain a good highlight and a good low light while still um, opening up the shadow areas and opening them up the, um, the highlight areas. But if you push your adaptive exposure pretty far like we have here to point 4, you'll start to see that it really does brighten up uh, quite a bit and it really does stretch those tonalities um, in the image. Well, down here on the lower left, right here in the middle, you can see my adaptive exposure is going to stay at 0.4, but my regions are going to go to 7. And basically what you can think about regions are, it's a grid that's placed on top of your image. And whatever number you set the regions at is how many columns are going to be in that grid. So we have 7 columns, and then once you've broken down the columns, it gets, or I'm sorry, once you have the columns, then the program will automatically break down the rest of the image into squares like you see here. So we have many more actual physical regions than the number seven, but seven indicates how many columns and then it will continue to break that down. And then the result of that is over here on the right. And you can see from the top to bottom You've actually, because you've broken the regions down into specific areas, it's going to be looking at each region in a much more localized manner. It's basically kind of putting its own histogram in each one of these squares and trying to maintain a, a nice low light and a nice highlight. Now, the algorithm is smart enough to know when it's not supposed to put a black when the overall region is let's say, for example, this top left blue square, it's not going to try to put a bright white and a bright black in there, or a dark black, because it knows that that's not where it's starting. But it will try to maintain um, good highlights, good lowlights everywhere else, so that is why you're able to bring detail into your highlights when you increase your region slider. You can bring, you can open up those shadow areas while still having across the board, it, it's, you know, you have a lot of tonality in there. It's just kind of making it a much more, making that dynamic range a little bit higher than it was. So let's take a look at one more example and then we'll take it, uh, take it in. So this is the original image. And here we have our adaptive exposure, I put it up to 0.5 and regions at 4. So that means I had my four columns, 
and then it broke it down into squares. So if the image doesn't necessarily break down completely evenly into squares, you'll have these smaller slivers of regions that are actually regions, but that really doesn't matter. Visually, I think, is really what matters when you're working with this. So here is the result over here on the right. We definitely um, have many more highlights going on in the field here, and lowlights for that matter, but it's also brought a lot of detail into the shadow areas and it has brought a lot of detail into my highlight areas as well. Now when we move into this one, this is when I left my adaptive exposure at the same at 0.5 and the only thing that was moved was the region slider and we moved that to 40, which broke down my image into 40 columns across the long side and then it broke it from there down into squares. So just that square grid is placed on top. And over here on the right you can see just how different it is from when the regions are at four versus 40. Because each one of these tiny squares is a region, it's looking at each one of these little areas and trying to maintain a good highlight, so it's going to really bring out some of that, um, it's really going to bring out some shadow detail, it's really going to um, bring that detail into the highlights and just get a much more higher dynamic range with this one image. So let's go ahead and play with this really quickly and then I'll take a couple of your questions. I hope that kind of gives you a visual of how that region slider is applied and how the regions are actually um, selected or broken down. Let's take this image into adjust. The greatest thing about this adaptive exposure and regions technology is it allows us to get so many different types of looks very quickly and then when we actually take in the details, the color, the noise, the curve enhancements, local adjustments, all these other finishing touches, you can really get some beautiful effects very quickly. So let's just look at this image, this, these top two sliders, it's going to be in our adaptive tab here. I'm going to take my regions down to one and just take my adaptive exposure up. So when my regions are at one, it's looking at my whole image as one region. And you can see, I can take this way up and it's going to try to maintain a good highlight and a good um, shadow area, but still open up certain shadow areas and maintain detail. But it does brighten up those uh, lighter areas. If I take my regions up to two, just from one to two makes a huge difference because now instead of looking at the whole image, it's looking at, it's looking at, it's broken into the two columns and it's probably looking at four different actual regions and making a much more local exposure adjustment and blending it together maintaining those shadows and highlights. Now as I keep going up this is a very high adaptive exposure, so I'll take that down. But as I keep going up, you can see it just continues to bring more and more local detail and tonality as I take that all the way up. Here's before and here's after. And some of the looks that it allows us to create is really the cool part. Let me go into... Um, We'll go into the Vibrant collection because there's a lot in here that I know that uses those adaptive and regions um, sliders. So you can start to really get these um, adjustment or these presets that will open up those dark areas, bring detail into your highlights and maintain uh, some good tonality there. Here's before here's after. You can always tell when the region's sliders are up because versus, let's say, I think probably the gritty one. Yes. So here you can tell once you start to play with it, this gritty one preset, the region slider is going to be very, um, it's, it's probably going to be one, maybe two, because there's not a lot of detail or tonality that's really coming into all of the texture here where there is, um, when I take that region slider up, there definitely is a lot of um, detail that starts popping out 
into my highlights. So let's open this up, global adjustments, adaptive exposure, and yes, it's at one versus when it's at, let's say, 20, and my adaptive exposure goes up. You start to really see all of that texture and tonality come through. And if you're unaware, this is not the only program that has adaptive exposure in regions technology, so we'll just pop this into Topaz Black and White Effects 2 real quick, just so you see that this technology is also within the conversion area of our Black and White Effects 2. If you just open up the adaptive exposure, I'll take my regions down to 1, adaptive exposure all the way up here, and then same idea. So you can get some very interesting black and white um, conversions as well using Topaz black and white effects because of this um, adaptive exposure in regions technology that works together. I hope that gives you a much better understanding of the region slider and how it really works with your image. Thank you so much for joining us. If you can stick around for questions, I'm happy to stick around with you. So let's see what questions we have coming through. Uh, David says, why wouldn't the maximum number of regions give the best results? It's just dependent upon what you are trying to achieve because the regions will help you achieve a certain look versus, um, versus necessarily better or worse. I, know, you, I hope that makes sense. So you can... Let's go into adjust to work with this. <clears throat> you can set it at a very high regions number and just work with adaptive exposure a tiny bit. And you can usually get some great results, but you start to achieve a certain more HDR, a pseudo HDR type of feel about it. You also, and that's because it's starting to open up that dynamic range in a way that um, you know your shadows here are starting to maintain their detail and open up over here on the right. The highlights are actually showing more of their detail and closing up a little. That clipping is being helped. So it just depends on if that's the look that you're after. If that's what you're after, then higher regions will usually give you a better, um, a better look. If that's not the look you're after, if you're more interested in maybe just having a little bit more subtle, so maybe something where regions are at six, still have that adaptive exposure coming up, so you get a lot of that, um, a lot of that pushing and the pulling of the highlights and shadows. But it's not all trying to kind of take it to the same tonality um, as as much as it would be if you take your regions all the way up. So it really just depends on what you're after. Uh, Carla says, why wouldn't you choose the region slider first and then follow with the adaptive exposure? And Carla, the region slider, if the adaptive exposure is not up at all, then regions won't do anything. It's not affecting your image because this tells how to disperse the adjustment of the adaptive exposure. So if you want to just even take it up a little, you can do that, not very much, and then work with it to see how it's affecting your image, more subtle effects with the adaptive exposure down. The adaptive exposure a little higher, you're going to start getting that more affected, stylized type of look. But you do have to work with that adaptive exposure first before the region sliders will actually show any sort of um, adjustment change. Uh, Mary says, does increasing detail using regions also introduce noise. Um, in areas that are such as blue skies, skin, things that are smooth where you're not necessarily wanting to put in a lot of grunge, when you work with a high stylized look like this, it will look like you are adding noise or grungy detail because you are. You're adding a grungy detail affected um, look to that area. You can quickly solve it by taking your region sliders and your adaptive exposure down a little, maybe not having such a stylized effect. You can come into your details area and say process details independently, which will immediately smooth out and take away that grunge effect, but still give you that adaptive exposure adjustment 
and start to um, increase that dynamic range if that's what you're after without that grunge effect or you can come into your local adjustments and quickly brush it out of the areas that you might not want so let's say I wanted it I wanted this adaptive exposure it's kind of more grunge effect on everything except my chairs I could come into my finish or my local adjustments go into my brush out work with my brush size I'm going to leave it at one 100% opacity so you really see it. This is the hardness slider. I'll leave that kind of right there. And then I'll keep my edge awareness all the way up, which means that my brush is detecting the edges based upon the color that the crosshairs of the middle of my brush are on. So as long as I leave the crosshairs on the blue or aqua of my chair and not the background, it's only going to affect my chairs. So you can see that over here in the lower right um, thumbnail for the mask, just how edge aware it really is. I can take away that grunge there in the middle of the chairs as well. There we go. And so here's before that. And after. So you can take the effect out of certain areas quite easily. Carrie says, is it safe to assume you can apply and treat areas with different region counts for better control? Absolutely. We have this apply button down in this right hand side. So let's say I wanted to um, apply this to the background. So that's what we just did. We, just, we applied the, the adjustment and detail enhancement to the background. Now I can apply this. Now my before image is actually this more grunge background image and then I can come in and let's say I just wanted to add in a finishing touch and make everything a bit more warm or maybe add a tonality to it. <clears throat> I can do that and if I just wanted to add that to my chair I could paint out everything else. So you can definitely keep applying things using this apply button in the lower right corner. Uh, Alejandro says, what would be the difference between regions and details? The results look somehow similar. Well, the, the regions are specific to the exposure adjustments. So if I'm at point 0.3, I move my regions around. Sure, currently the, the detail enhancement is attached to kind of that grunge effect that is um, being placed upon the image with my region slider. But I can come into my details and I can continue to add more strength to my details without affecting any more exposure. Detail Boost is going to work on the really, really, really small texture details, so that's going to start to go a little crazy for this image. But let's say I say process details independently, that's going to break up the exposure and detail um, relationship that is there by default to help create this kind of grunge or topaz effect. So I'll take that away. So now my details have not been worked on because of this region slider. The region slider is not going to create, no matter how far I push it, it's not going to create a grunge effect because I've disabled that part of the algorithm. But now I can come in and I can add just slight detail enhancement just to at least get a little detail popping if I want without having to get that super super grunged effect so you just have a little bit more control of your detail with that detail slider and the detail boost is really important to know about as well alright everybody I think I've answered the majority of your questions if I didn't I'm very sorry you can um, send them into you again webinars at topazlabs.com Take care, and hopefully we'll see you back for next week's Quick Tip Thursday. Bye, everyone.